regular students today we're going to learn about stoichiometry okay I know that sounds like a big word but uh, in essence we're going to learn how to use the mole train okay um, here's uh, let's first talk about what you know already and where we're going okay you should know by now what the definition of a mole and what it is as well as Avogadro's number you should be able to calculate molar mass and you should be able to convert between moles mass number of units and volume okay uh, what we're gonna learn today is one big task and it is to predict the amount of product uh, that will be produced Okay, there's supposed to be a D right there in a chemical reaction through stoichiometry. Okay, so we're 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 going. This is what we're doing today: stoichiometry. Well, uh, before we move on, I just want to make sure we all know what that word means. Okay, stoichiometry is simply the study of the relationships between the amounts of products and reactants. Okay, and of course, we're going to have to use our wonderful mole. Okay. Um, so let's start just very basically. When we look at a chemical reaction, we know that we have coefficients. Okay, when there's nothing there, we assume there's a one. All right, and when we were balancing equations, we said that those were the number of atoms or molecules or compounds, which is true. Here we have two molecules of hydrogen gas, two, one molecule of oxygen, making two molecules of water. However, these numbers also correspond to the number of moles. Okay, so in this reaction we have two moles of hydrogen reacting with one mole of oxygen to produce two moles of water. Okay, so again you're seeing the relationship between products and reactants, okay, which is what stoichiometry is. If we look at this uh, decomposition reaction here we have two moles of potassium chlorate uh, decomposing into two moles of potassium chloride and three moles of oxygen okay uh, so just be aware that this number also signifies the mole now you can fill in the mole train that you've been given okay I know you love my incredibly artistic work okay and also my amazing penmanship uh, uh, here we're going we're going to go from grams of A to moles of A moles of B to grams of B and I know that doesn't make any sense to you right now but it will in just a minute and in order to get from place to place we're going to have to go through these ratios okay it's like if you're traveling through a train and you're going from cart to cart you have to step through these ratios to get to the different carts and of course your your goal is to get to this cart where Mr. Nigel our class mascot is okay that will always be your goal I know this looks like some strange mutated bird but it actually is our mascot mole Mr. Nigel so if you need more time to copy please pause this video and, and finish copying the information Okay, we're going to do two examples and then you're going to do some practice problems on your own. Uh, consider the reaction below. How much hydrogen gas is produced if 3.2 moles of zinc are used? Okay, so here's our reaction. Uh, well, we're given 3.2 moles of zinc. Okay, that's going to be A. And we're asked for how much hydrogen, okay? So hydrogen gas here is going to be B. Well, we're given moles of A, so we're going to start in this cart. And again, our mole is to get, our goal is to get to uh, Mr. Nigel. Okay, so I'm going to do my bracket, just like you guys are used to already. Okay, and I'm going to start with moles of A, because that's what I'm, I'm given. Okay, so I have 3 point two moles of zinc <clears throat> well to get to the next car I have to step through the ratio of mole of A to mole of B in the reaction well A is zinc so if I look here I have one mole of zinc okay and my B is going to be hydrogen gas okay so I have uh, here one mole of hydrogen gas so this is going to be a pretty easy ratio uh, one mole of zinc to one mole of hydrogen gas well since mole of zinc is on the top here 
one mole of zinc is going to have to be on the bottom on the other side and one mole of hydrogen gas will go here. All right, I have now arrived at this cart. Okay, I need have one more cart to travel through, and I have to step through this uh, the step here, which is the molar mass of B over one mole of B. Well, the molar mass of H2 is going to be 2.016 grams over one mole. Okay. Now, since I have one mole of hydrogen here, one mole of hydrogen has to go down here. And, of course, the molar mass is what's going to go on top. And, of course, we're assuming here you know how to calculate the molar mass. All right? These units cancel out. These units cancel out. And I'm only left with grams of hydrogen, which is exactly what the question asked me. So I know I did it correctly. Okay, now when we are putting this in the calculator, we're going to do 3.12 times 1 divided by 1, which of course is going to be 3.12, times 2.016 divided by 1. Okay, and the answer is going to be, oops, excuse me, 6.29 grams of H2. Okay, this is the answer right here. <clears throat> Let's do one more problem. I'm going to change the color here again. Um, if 41.89 grams of hydrochloric acid is completely neutralized by magnesium hydroxide, how many grams of water will be produced? Okay, well, here I'm given this. So that's going to be A, what I'm given. And I'm being asked for grams of water. Okay, so that's going to be B as well. I'm given grams of HCl. So I'm going to start in this cart here. Okay, I'm going to have several steps to go through. I'm going to start with what I'm given, 41.89 grams of HCl. Well, the next step I have to go through here is the molar mass of A over one mole of A. Well, since grams of HCl is going to have is on top, it's going to have to be on the bottom here. Okay, so the molar mass is going to have to be on the bottom, and one mole of HCl is going to have to be on top. When I calculate the molar mass of HCl, I get 36.4. All right, so I have arrived at this cart, and I'm on my way here to see Mr. Nigels. That's my goal. Okay, so I have one more step to take, and that's the ratio between mole of A and mole of B. Well, if I look for mole of A, here I have two moles of A, and my mole of B, which is water, here I have two moles, okay? So mole of HCl is on top, so that's going to have to be on the bottom here, moles of HCl. Um, and then the only thing I have left here is, is moles of B in my ratio, okay? So mole of B is what's going to go on top. Okay, again, as you work through the steps, you only have two numbers to work with. And essentially, what you, all you have to do is decide what goes on top and what goes on the bottom. Okay, I am now here, and I have one more step to go before I get to Mr. Nigel's, and that is to work with these two numbers here. Well, I know that, one, that moles of water is on top, so one mole of water is going to have to be on the bottom. Okay, and then the molar mass of water is going to be approximately 18 grams. Okay, and then we're just going to cross these units here because they cancel each other out. And I'm left with grams of water, which is what the question asked me right here. So I know I did it right. Okay, and then again, as we, we do this in the calculator, we're going to do 41.89 times 1 divided by 36.458 times 2 divided by 2, times 18 divided by 1. 
And my answer is going to be 20.68 grams of water. And that is my answer. Okay. So now you're going to have some practice problems to work with. Thank you for listening, and I hope you learned a lot of chemistry.